So um, today I'm going to talk about the charge cooler which I've taken out of the VX220 and how to pressure test it. I was losing a lot of boost on my car um, and I checked all the pipes and I checked my actuator and I checked boost solenoids and all sorts of things and then found out that actually I had a split in my charge cooler at a weld um, and that's where all my boost was going. So this is a charge cooler that I've got out of my VX220. Um, it's made by Pro Alloy. It's one of their earlier versions apparently they tell me um, Before I talk about the story about this I'm um, just for those who don't know what a charge cooler is if I just very quickly explain um, Charge is simply referred to the compressed air that goes into your intake manifold You can get compressed air via a supercharger or a turbocharger um, The VX220 I have has a turbocharger in it uh, so the compressed air, the compressor in the turbocharger is run by exhaust gases which turn a turbine which then compress the uh, another which then run another turbine that compresses air. Unfortunately what happens when the air is compressed through a turbo is that it gets very very hot, extremely hot and that air needs to be cooled down. You could use either an intercooler which what is what comes um, as standard on the VX220 um, or if you want a better application you'll use something like this which is a charge cooler there are even better intercoolers that you can get as well I suppose uh, for that matter anyway what a charge cooler does uh, quite simply is that air the charged air comes into this end the bottom of the um, charge cooler and it comes out at this end which goes into the plenum or the top hat um, into your intake inside this is a like a heater matrix or uh, a radiator uh, you might say and what happens is that water is pumped through the charge cooler so we've got an inlet um, and outlet I might be saying it's the wrong way around actually um, and this water then goes to a radiator at the front of the car uh, where the water is cooled so hot air comes into here we have a heat exchanger in the form of a, a water a, a radiator matrix and the hot air then um, the heat of the hot air goes uh, is cooled by the water in the water matrix the water then is recooled at a radiator at the front of the car and that circulates um, and cools the air down um, as you drive the car okay now if you can look closely i found the um the leak on this and I, what I actually did is I took it back to Pro Alloy uh, to repair it and they're very kind enough to repair it free of charge um, and they run a test so I think here if you look very carefully um, you might be able to see where they welded it up this was at the top of the um, charge cooler that actually no that's the bottom of the charge cooler uh, where I had the leak when they ran a test on this, they also found that in this corner, um, so as this sits in the car, this is the, the bottom of the charge cooler and I have a wheel, the wheel arch runs along here. And what's happened is that dirt um, was collecting there and was basically corroding the aluminium. And when they ran a test, a pressure test on this, they found that there was some water leaking out of here. So they patched this up as well. It appears though when they patched this up um, and the uh, heat cycle that they ran through this actually damaged this beyond uh, well it's not beyond repair but they actually damaged it further in that now I have uh, a leak from the water matrix inside the charge cooler so I'm not entirely happy about that situation because it means I'm actually buying a new charge cooler which is many, many hundreds of pounds, um, about 800 actually, um, which I'm going to have to put in the car. So anyway, I thought I will show you now how you can pressure test this. The easiest way is to put a bung in here, um, which you can buy off eBay. You want something that um, is a conical bung. Here's a small version of a conical bung. Obviously, it's way too small for this. Um, but these are the sort of bungs they use on test tubes and um, you want a conical bung so you want the internal diameter less than this which I think is around 50 uh, to 52 and you want the, the, the bigger end diameter to be more so it can go in I think they cost about four pounds on eBay so you can bung one in there and then you put one in there um, and then you apply pressure into it now how do you do that 
Okay, I didn't have these big bungs, but I did have this small one. So um, I did something a little cheating way, really, because I was so desperate to find out what was wrong with it. So what I did is I grabbed a, I grabbed an aerosol cap, believe it or not, which actually fit. So this is my aerosol can. Um, it's a carburetor cleaner, actually. That's um, I use. I think we got it from Tool Station. So what I did is I took one of my pipes. Uh, this is the pipe that leads from the plenum to the charge cooler. And I attached the pipe to the uh, charge cooler and I'll put the Jubilee clip on there. I took the other pipe, which leads to the bottom of the turbocharger, and I attached the pipe to the plenum and pushed the charge cooler in there. Really, this is the one that goes to the turbo and this is the one at the top that goes to the plenum. Okay. At the other end of the pipes, what I did, I took my aerosol can and I just inserted it into the pipe. So I'll show you one of the pipes that fits more easily than, than the other here. So you insert it into there and that's not going in very easily, is it? Right, you insert it into there, there you go. That's it, put a Jubilee clip on here and that forms a nice airtight uh, seal. So basically if I put this end of the pipe onto my charge cooler, obviously the end of the pipe is sealed so when I put any air into it from the other end, which is this end, the air can't escape through through this end. Right. What do I do with this end? So what I did, I took the cap off my um, aerosol can, I made a hole and then I put some duct tape on it and I made the hole so that the bung that I actually have can fit in, like so. Very simple. And what happens when you buy these bungs, they actually come with a hole um, through the middle, going through, and that's because they use them in labs um, when they want to heat water or heat, well it's not unlikely to be water, but whatever mixture they're heating, they want to collect a gas, they'll put this on the top of the test tube and then they'll run another tube through uh, the bung, which will go into some water or something that condenses the gas um, and, or where they can collect it. So what I've done is I've actually taken a valve, um, you can cut this off a cycle tire um, or an inner tube of a car tire or whatever but you need to get a valve and you need to basically shove that in there and make it nice and tight which is what this has done this is excellent actually I even use this valve when I take it out to uh, check my um, actuator as well so what I've done put the um, I actually put the bung in uh, this way around and I'll show you why because when I want to close up one end of the pipe with this um, uh, with the lid of the aerosol can I actually want this end of the uh, of the lid inside the pipe so that when I run a Jubilee clip around it this is a this is um, stronger uh, if I run a Jubilee clip around this end it will just squeeze and squash and do very little so we put the um, aerosol can lid on this end and then I will simply run a Jubilee clip over there and tighten that up. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I don't think you wanna watch me do all of this, so I'm gonna do this, set it up, and then we continue, and I'll show you how we